Sam, <laughs> welcome to the Friday Games Review. Oh, oh yeah, rolling it again. All right. Bam. Welcome again to the Friday Games, Games Review. Yes. Review. All right. I'm Dan Galpin, and with me is Ian Nee Lewis. And we're kicking it old school today. We decided we've been doing a lot to bring the quality of the show up. And, you know, lots of new shots, yeah. lots of new effects. Lots Low of new quality today. That's where we're at, man. Yeah, today we just dragged out the bar table. We got the beers. And honestly, we're just going to talk games. Yep. And if you guys want to stick around, that's cool. I'm not going to stop you. That's right. And we, want, we actually have looked at the moderator page. And uh, guys, stop nominating stuff we've already looked at, man. Come and on. Also, like, stuff that's garbage. Well, I'm yeah, kind of bummed about that. But no, you know, there's some good stuff here. But, you know, really, man, we, like, we've already reviewed it. We're not going to review it again no. unless, unless you've done, like, something totally kick-ass awesome with it. Yeah. But seriously, um, mm -hmm. you know, A, we're, we're tired. Um, it's been a long we had freaking some, week. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It's been just <laughs> Uh, yeah, lots of lots of stuff going down here at work, but um, all good, good stuff, good yeah, stuff for you, I guess. <laughs> anyway, point being, dude, we're gonna get you promoted, man. That's yeah, that's, 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 that's where we're go. going. All right, so, so anyway, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about, um, but I think we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of game review. Or I think we're just gonna talk a little bit about games. We've actually been um, doing we every every now and then we kind of do a sweep of. A bunch of games that are popular yeah. to see, you know, how how well they're working on different devices mm -hmm. and if there's any issues with them. Um, Developers you know, the do very like. interesting things. Yeah, <laughs> you, it's, that's a, that's what we learn. So, yeah, we've we've learned some really interesting things, and I think it'd be fun to talk about them. And at the same time, we'd like to, you know, look at a few games mm -hmm. and maybe mock some. It's possible. Maybe not. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we have we have we have our, our good friends from uh, Com to Us nominated a game, and their games are always fun because they don't they aren't intended to appeal to my cultural norm. Do you remember when we had to so, send that one game back and say we're not going to feature it <laughs> unless you take out the uh, the giant red uh, phallus. I guess it was supposed to be a rocket. It was. But it was. But it, it, the problem is, is when you make a rocket with two giant round orbs on the side of it, it really does have the wrong impression. Especially when the nose cone is purple. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It was... <laughs> anyway, today we're drinking La Lagunitas IPA. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Uh, we need a gift today. from our friend the Famster because I've totally run through my beer budget and I'm now going to start spending it on something else like beer. Rent. Oh, <laughs> wait! You're not. Gonna, come on, it's the beer budget. That's true. That's yeah. true. No, yeah. actually, you know um, what I'm spending it on now is uh, audio stuff, uh, audio equipment, and okay. lights. And lights. Yep, because we need key lights. We need key lights coming yeah, right back here, I know, dude. shining down on your shoulders. That's right. It's gonna make your hair look luxurious. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm wearing a hat again because there was some public outcry about the fact that I had no hat last week. So uh, once again, but what's what it what is what is fun is that I'm actually performing in an opera right now in, in my spare time. Yeah, I thought you said they were gonna make you cut your hair for that. Yeah, they, they were going to. But uh, and then, you rebelled. Well, no, I didn't actually. Your cast members rebelled. Actually, they first tried to put me in a wig, and they put me in a wig that was honestly like the twenty dollar wig special, it, it, and I looked like I was a game show host. And you know, when, when you're in an opera where you're supposed to be in like 1890 or something like that, and you look like you know Wink Martindale, it just it just doesn't work. Oh man, Wink so, Martindale, I miss that guy. I do too. Um, Never uh, happened to him anyway. <laughs> but uh, but they, but they did make me actually dye my beard. This is this is not the normal color, so it shows no, up a lot better that. on video. I think I'm gonna yeah. go as, go as Zorro for Halloween this year because I, I, I do think I'm rocking the Zorro look. You know, probably like, like fat Zorro is what we're going for. Oh, and just because we're probably gonna <laughs> die halfway through when the YouTube stream cuts out, might as well say right now that uh, next week will be a perfect time to talk about Halloween apps. Absolutely, and, and Halloween games. So you know we're we're yeah. uh, we're gonna we're gonna actually have uh, two weeks of Halloween games. Uh, so you know it doesn't actually say so on the moderator pages yet, but please nominate some Halloween games. Otherwise, I'm gonna nominate them. So uh, yeah, I don't think it's really a risk. I think that yeah. there's plenty of, in fact, Dude, there's so many games zombie games out there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, seriously. Exactly, right? You know, here we are. It's Farmville with zombies. Yep. Zombieville. Yeah. There actually is a game. Actually, um, <laughs> is, so I'm, I'm really excited to farm. see if there's going to be an Android version. Uh, my uh, One of my old coworkers from Project Offset uh, did a mobile game called Brains. It's a, oh. uh, it's a uh, zombie uh, real-time strategy game. 
Oh, it's you, right up your you alley. Play the, you play the zombie horde. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's very, very quick. So wait, it's it's interesting. Okay, so so it's. Um, Oh, well, I'm looking forward to that. That 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 sounds cool. And uh, so right now, I will say the closest we have to Halloween we do have we do have Witch Wars on tap for today, but it's not really a Halloween witch. No, no, they're they're sort of your sexy anime witch. Yeah, uh, that's the way I would describe it. So um, and it's weird because y y you pointed out they they do have handcuffs as as one of the things. That you know, let's let's let yeah. the viewers judge for themselves. Yeah. Let's take a look at. <laughs> now you'll notice that we've completely eschewed lower thirds today. We don't have any titles or anything. Nope. You'll have to figure out what yep. we're looking at on time. So it's a mystery. <laughs> disconnected to the server. Oops. Oops. Wait. Hold on. So basically, what the we're going to do back. is if there's like a lot of hating in the YouTube comments. Uh -huh. Well, first we'll discount ninety percent of it because that's what you do with YouTube comments if you want to <laughs> remain sane. No <laughs> offense. <laughs> Uh, wait, but, are we, are, are, did we start out saying that's the real question? No, yeah, we didn't. I, I was gonna and of say, course, I'm not that. talking about any of our live viewers because they all rock. <laughs> yes. Point rock. being <laughs> that uh, we we are kind of like just winging this show today, mm -hmm. but we'd love to hear yeah you know, as, as sort of a you know a counterpoint to what we've been doing before, which is kind of like slick and overproduced, I guess. You know, what do you think? Yeah, exactly. Let us let us know. Do you want us to continue overproducing? We can do that. We can make more 3D titles. We, we can use more effects. We can use more green screen. We can, that's we can, right, baby. We can have us on freaking Mars, man, now for, the next, for the next show. That's right. It's up to you. I've got a green screen, a <laughs> bonus burning a hole in my pocket, and a year's <laughs> subscription to Adobe CS6. So yeah. Absolutely. Watch out. Exactly, uh -oh. man. After We're going to use After Effects on your butt. So let's uh, just... Uh-oh, guys. I just put up a lower thirds for you guys. Oh! Oh! oh, oh no, man. you didn't, son! No. <laughs> Rock on! <laughs> he just did that. You know, he just, he just did that despite us. He knew that. That's awesome. That was awesome. Thank you. We have lower thirds now. So yes, the title is Witch Wars, and um, and let me let's actually restart. No, wait a second, Dan. Because you don't I, see the witches except so, to the beginning. Right. There's the witches. Okay. So excellent. <laughs> and now, Dan, this style of gameplay, it, it, it's really interesting to me. It seems like mm -hmm. there's a bunch of things picked. here Good that uh, <laughs> yeah that you need to match. Yes. How how many do you need to match? Three. Three, really? Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. And there's like a grid of them, and they're all different sorts of objects. Yes, but I'm playing against this, another witch. You see? Okay. So she's like, she's like kicking my butt now because well, you're talking. Oh, you're totally wait, ruining wait a my so game. So what you're saying is, <laughs> I'm talking, so you're not getting any work done. Exactly. <laughs> hey, wait. <laughs> I'm 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 sending a, I'm sending a message here. I'm just saying. No, I'm just no, saying. Okay, no, that's true. So anyway, yeah. That, so play, man. What? I'm restarting. Okay. Ah, witches! Is it always the same witches? I uh, you know I don't know. Okay, They're and then the question is, yeah, why do they have hands handcuffs? Well, yeah, I, I didn't understand the handcuffs part. Is there is there? So let us know on the live stream. Is there some sort of witch thing with handcuffs that we should be aware of? That you know that that we. I mean, I, I understand like you know the the pent the the star pentagram and stuff like that. You know that's that kind of stuff. I and you know the the star of David's kind of a kind of a sort of witchy thing to some people. Um, but yeah, come on, tell me what this is. I don't I don't get the symbolism here. Maybe I'm trying to read too much. Yeah, into that this is game. weird. This is the star of David. Like, would, shouldn't it be like a pentagram? It should be a pentagram. I know. Is this like just all completely messed up? It's possible. Yes. I, I I just I just don't know. I'm honestly awesome. I haven't had enough to drink yet to get this game. So. Yeah, you are a little. Do you want to just take a break? <laughs> yeah. hey guys, I'm just going to jump in and, and read you guys one of the comments. Oh, yeah. Um, so, this is from one of our longtime viewers, mm -hmm. uh, Funner Goat. And he says The last minute title card actually looks better than the formerly overproduced title card. Oh! Oh, that's like, that's awesome. That is awesome. We, mm -hmm. we are so. Okay, okay. Good to know. Good to know. I blame Keynote. No, he's got, a, he's got a good point. I blame Keynote for that, actually. Well, I'll tell you what <laughs> happened is we. Yeah, we threw together that that uh, that thing in Keynote, and it looked good at the time. And then one of the reasons we don't have it now is because we got really sick of it and didn't like it at all. So um, <laughs> you're you're with us, actually. Yeah, yeah we're we're totally with you. Yeah, well, we're 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 gonna when we actually have time next week, maybe we'll do another one that's cooler. But you know, just so you know, that's not a thrown together title card. That is an original Roman of New York title card oh. for which we paid <gasps> vast sums. <laughs> well, yeah, his salary. Vast <laughs> sums. 
All, All right. right, so what what does this have that other match three games don't have? I, um, I think that's a question you always got to ask. It is this. so it is it is it is the battle element um, where oh okay, she's right. crying so she, oh, she lost I totally won hey, new, new witch, witch. so it's got witches and handcuffs and a, and battles and spells and it's it's actually pretty cool like honestly it's fun wait there's spells yeah well you get spells by by matching up certain skills you see and then you can cast spells Dude, level Ooh, one explosion nice. so yeah. Um, so it is actually, I mean, honestly, it's fun. Uh, you know, if you like these kind of games, there's there's ones that really have a lot more depth in terms of, uh, like, progression. Like, you know, one of my favorite ones is Call of Atlantis, which I actually played all the way through from PlayerX. We've talked about it a few times on here. Yep, um, yep. Because I like the fact that you actually got to different cities and got to different challenges. And um, But this is fun for what it is. It's sort of, it sort of reminds me, actually, of um, the, uh, the classic... Uh, a puzzle fighter in the sense that you're sort of you know you're you, you know kind of battling against someone yeah else. that's what I was thinking yeah, you well. know it's, but taking it to match three instead of instead of to mm -hmm. you know a puzzle bubble kind of thing yeah, so, yeah. so you know I, I say cool nice 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 mashup that of game cool. genres I always appreciate mashups um, as far as the graphics we have really kind of low res backgrounds with high res icons if you actually look if you look at this I don't know if you can see this in the live stream but if you actually can see like the verses is really kind of blurry and the backgrounds are really blurry but then the icons look beautiful like the, you gotta like, ask yourself if that's they, a, if that's they did that and if they, if they then just decided, okay, this background's too big. Nobody will notice if we just blur it out a little bit, and make it smaller. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, they, I'm sure they were trying to make the uh, APK size small, which I appreciated. I would say one thing that was great about today: all these games installed in like four minutes. Like, 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 honestly, they were wow. they were all tiny games. Unlike Bard's Tale. Unlike Bard's Tale. Yeah, last week, and I was like installing Bard's yeah. Tale, which, by the way, is awesome. Thank you, In Exile, for for doing that. That's that's like. It made my whole week the fact that we had Bar's Tail on on Android finally, but um, but yeah, it's freaking enormous, um, and uh, mostly because of the song about beer, 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 tiddly beer, beer. Oh, I got stunned. Dude, it's Tommy Tallarico. You don't cut out his songs. No, you don't. You absolutely don't. And it's Carrie Ellis as the as the uh, uh, narrator, uh, not as narrator as the uh, as the bard. So you know you gotta appreciate sure. that. You know, the funny thing is, I, I think the last time I played Bard's Tale uh -huh. was actual Bard's Tale. Like the yeah, they're, they're the same here. <laughs> and, I missed the, what, the PS2 what, version entirely. What was entirely. the kick was it, it actually comes with that. Yes, yeah. And it's not nearly as good as I remembered. <laughs> uh, when yeah. you're, when back, back then, a 240 by 240 graphic in yeah. like 16 colors was awesome. really blew me away. Yeah. Like, how do they and get I so many colors on the screen, man? Right. I, well, because I had a VGA monitor, which oh, you yeah. could put into 256 color mode as long as you're willing to go down to um, QVGA. So one of the things that's interesting about this game is this game actually uses Com2S's um, oh, network. Yeah. Back Dude, to the game. you totally stepped on I my reminiscing. I know, I know, I know. No, but you didn't even say anything. You didn't say you didn't say like, oh, shut up, Ian. Let's talk about this. You just like acted like I wasn't even talking. So no, I mean, I I totally miss <laughs> I totally miss that. Actually, you know, I, I, what one of my favorite thing was I I, I had an original uh, like uh, you know uh, CGA adapter for my my PC, and most people didn't realize if you actually hooked it up to a composite monitor and you had the right games, it could actually display 16 colors at once. So that's how the original. King's Quest worked, um, and, uh, and it used the same method. That oh, the oh, Apple oh, right, right, right. Because it, yeah, it does. It was like a was it scan line or was it block? It was block. Yeah, so yeah. it was a block palette, right? Um, yeah. So and, and you basically you would you would you you have two lines. You put them right next to each other um, horizontally, and then you end up getting a color uh, mm -hmm. on composite. Um, because of the you know kind of effect raster effect you got from that, right. similar to what you got on Apple II. So you remember the Commodore 64 did that, but they didn't actually have enough memory, so every pixel ended up being twice as wide. Yes. <laughs> All right, uh, back to which wars. Good days. Which wars? So yeah, I, um, so overall, you know, pretty good. I, I mean, my main th my main thing is that it, like it pushes the the, the comp to a social network into like new levels of, of annoyance if you don't want to actually use it. Um, but the game the game plays. Oh, come on. No. It's not, it's not, I mean, what is it doing? Um, well, okay. So the first, let's see if I can actually re re replicate it. Um, I might have to clear. I data. mean, well, I just didn't. I didn't see it come up or anything. Okay. It also takes a really long time to load. I, I, don't, I don't know, know why. why. It's like refining the swords. I'm like, like, dude, what are you copying something to the from the APK file? I mean, it's, this game is tiny. Like, I'm not sure what it's doing. Delivering still books. Really like, is it copy copying the network? Like, I just want to play. I want to get my witch action on. And Delivering like, handcuffs ordered from the shopping mall. Oh. No, seriously, there is <laughs> there is something there is something up with handcuffs. Yeah, I know this game. I know. I don't. Yeah, I don't know how to interpret this, but I don't. I don't think I want to. So then, then when it comes up, actually, I end up getting you end up getting the you know some sort of news. It looks like it's it's actually being nice to me the second time. It's not actually forcing me into lots and lots of stuff, um, okay. which is so. It cool. gave you some some ads up front. It get well not ad, not just ads right. like 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 a kind of a general. Here, maybe I sign. I don't know. Um, 
Yeah, anyway, who? I'm sure these guys know what they're doing. They make you know oodles and oodles of sales, and uh, especially in Korea. A cur. I didn't. I like o cur. And restrictions. Well, I, yeah, they. Um, I, w- I would say they don't quite know what they're doing. They're close. <laughs> they're close. Well, it's just they, they don't. Uh, all right. Okay. But my personal theory <laughs> is that they're most of their translation department is like nephews. And well, I, I'm just saying that you know, like like this is a, a word word wrapping thing though here. L- actually, let me explain it to you. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. You and I. Yeah. Rap words yeah. on on syllables. That's that's because we rap. Right. Yeah. You know what this is? Yeah. This is how you do word wrapping, Gangnam style. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gangnam style. All right. So, anyways, uh, we'll quit. Uh, let's go. Let's go to our, our next game. I, I I figure I have to look. We have to look at Happy Sheep. <laughs> we have to look at Happy Sheep, but only because we want to know if anyone on the live stream can explain this game to us. Uh, the sheep are happy. Um, well, they're very happy, and it's like, I, I mean, I think I, I definitely got past the first level, and I'm pretty sure I knew how I got past the first level. I just... All right. Uh, Play button really close to advertisement. Clever. All right. So uh, so your goal is to get the sheep into the barn, I think, and you do that um, partially by flicking them, I think, but mostly by using the accelerometer. No, you know what? Flicking is not actually a part of it. Flicking oh, it is isn't. not a mechanic. It's... Um, because if you try it, wow. Because if, if, you, if you really pay attention, it's just tapping them. Oh. Um, I don't think it's actually recording. Well, so basically you put the barn at the bottom of the screen and just let everything fall. Yeah, I guess so. Um, so um, the sheep are happy. Um, mostly, you know, and, and that's good. They have, they have one frame of animation uh, on them, which, is, you know, which makes them look happier. Um, uh, there's a dog. I'm not sure what the dog does, except I guess it blocks you from getting sheep in if it happens to be in the right place. Um, that doesn't make sense. It seems like the dog should be helping you get the sheep in. Totally, totally. Well, you know, dogs. Do- you know, you do have sheep dogs that were you know that, that go with sheep. Ooh, mm-hmm. we just lost HDMI because you know, micro HDMI sucks. Uh, it's flickering. There we are. All right, but um, but anyway, so. Um, that's that's the game. Um, you can see on the tablet um, we're seeing some minor um, sprite alignment errors. You can see the classic around the chickens. You can see there are little lines around the chickens and a little line around the dog. And this is pretty common if you're using a sprite sheet and you're trying to break things up and run on a Carefully. device of, of higher resolution. Yeah. All right, stop playing that game seriously. Oh yeah, what? Why? Because you keep tilting it around, and it keeps popping out the connector. Oh, well, I'm holding the connector in now. Well, you're not holding it right. Uh, I'm not holding it put right. Put it on the table. It. Just oh. put it on it. You know what? You're cut off. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. So, um, uh, but I, got a, I have a couple of great comments from our, uh, our yeah, viewers. Please. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, Let's hear it. some viewer comments. So the, the first comment is that uh, flicking your sheep causes blindness. Just saying. <laughs> I have Good no point. idea Good what point. you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the, the second comment is that um, <laughs> someone, someone wants to see us abuse the green screen in horrible ways. Yeah! All right. Oh, believe me, we, we have. We we're we're have, saving yeah. it for the outtakes video. But Dude. I will say this about um, <laughs> Happy Sheep. The, the sprite outlines that you saw mm-hmm. um, did not occur without the HDMI connector plugged oh. in. So this is something that we're actually starting to learn is it's really, really important to go in and test your game at really bizarre resolutions. Yeah. Because sooner or later, no matter what resolution you think is never going to happen in the real world, mm-hmm. it's going to hit the streets of Shenzhen at half <laughs> the price of everything else. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Samsung is going to snap up a boatload of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, I mean, people, are, I'm always amazed with what we're getting in terms of screens. I mean, even in terms of last year when, you know, I, I was kind of amazed that we actually had a device which, that was shipping out on a phone form factor with 720p. And that was last year. Oh, yeah. And yeah knows? God only knows what's yeah, going to happen Yeah, exactly. Now. What's going to happen this year. So, yeah. um, <laughs> But it's not just that. Yeah. It's, it's that you think, you think, oh, 720p. That's, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. But what's really crazy is 735p. Well, yeah. Or, Which is actually no. where we were because <laughs> exactly when you when right. you we were actually we were actually at, at uh, on on this device we're actually running at uh, true 720p when you're in HDMI, but you're not in HDMI. We're in this kind of weird funky thing where we're actually right. you know 35 or 40 pixels short of that. I think so. Exactly, and so yeah, that can, that can mess up some 
uh, some sprite sheet calculations, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So anyways, it was interesting. Also, the thing is, that's interesting. When you plug HDMI in, you actually you actually get one of those rare things where it, it actually gets you or tells your app to change the size. And so your app needs yeah. to know how to respond to that. We actually had one app earlier that had a giant purple or green fringe on it. And that actually was because, oh, we just never realized that the size change could come in as late as it did. So mm -hmm. you, do, you do have to watch out oh, for it that. Oh, it can come in any time. You're going to come in any time. You've got to be ready for it. Yep. So, uh, so Yeah, I mean, we've said it before. We'll say it again. Programming Android is not like programming a game console. It's like programming a desktop or a web browser. You have to be ready for hardware to be different. <gasps> Ooh, so when you select hard difficulty, you have chickens who are blocking your way now, too. I hadn't noticed that. All right, so that was fun. But tell oh. me what else you've been doing this week, Dan. Other than, other, other than, uh, other than flicking my sheep? Yeah. OK. Uh, <laughs> So what other games we have going on? We actually have words work out, which is fun. Um, it's, it's yet another, another in a long line of words games, but it's done very, very well. Um, I would say that uh, the, the excessive use of rounded rectangles is a little unnecessary on Android. Uh, but there's some good words here, like pleat, ouch. Um, and, and you are, you know, it's, it's a time game. So uh, hmm. Oh, well. So yeah, we now we get to learn how good I am Why at these games. So, <laughs> anyways, so it's it's a fun game where you're trying to draw things in a sort of a Boggle-esque fashion. There's a lot of power-ups, a lot of really well thought out stuff. I thought it was a really fun game. On a tablet, it works it works great, um, you know, because it just scales to fill the screen. Um, the only thing on a tablet is the uh, obviously you can see the area with the ad is is kind of awkward looking and takes up a very small portion of that top banner. So um, yeah. probably could adjust for that. Especially games like this, you, there's there's really not much of an excuse for for not trying it on an emulator. And yeah, just trying some different sizes. It's a little bit of a pain because honestly, it we don't switch as fast mm -hmm. as we could between different sizes and different um, layouts mm -hmm. on the on the emulator or on the dev tools. But it's well worth it. Um, and it, it, it turns out that for games nowadays, I mean, I think we used to see some really bizarre things. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we still do on some devices. But um, uh, <laughs> as we're, you know, for instance, as we're looking at devices that haven't shipped yet, which we sometimes do, there can be some crazy stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, but, it's, and it, and it's interesting. We, you know, we, we sometimes um, do it to ourselves, and you know, I think one of the things we're going to cover in, 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 in future sessions are, is is ways in which we are, you have to be careful, you know, and right. and and, uh, and so um, sometimes people make assumptions about the way me the memory and devices is, are laid out. Sometimes there are actually some bugs in Davic. It turns out that were affecting the way that one could subclass various classes that people mm -hmm. were accidentally taking advantage of. Yeah, um, that's actually one thing you'll notice is that. Um, yeah, the the original uh, Android source base, you know, was obviously not 100% perfect, and there were a few things that either were underspecified or were just done wrong that tend to get cleaned up over time by AOSP contributors. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, and by, uh, us. And by us, and by us, yeah. Um, so, for instance, uh, we made for uh, Jelly Bean, yeah, we made pthread POSIX compliant. It was supposed to return an error. Yeah. If it couldn't give you the thread you you wanted, you know, with the scheduling mm -hmm. that you wanted, uh, and it used to just fall back and you know still create a thread, but it wasn't what you asked for. Yeah, and we made it do the right thing, which is return an error, and that broke everybody, Every, everything. Because it turns out nobody was check well. Why would you check uh, for errors on pthread? Because it never threw any. Yeah, exactly. So we had a ton of games and other apps that would spin up threads and then sit there waiting, like, hey, all right, just waiting for that thread to spin waiting up. Waiting for the thread to spin and up. And exactly. Yeah. And yeah, no. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> and and nothing would happen. So uh, so yeah, so you have to be you have to be a little bit cautious. Um, yeah. Sometimes reading our, our docs actually is a good thing. Um, and, and also just you know adhering to standards, even, even when it doesn't break you. You know, the other thing that happened, uh, I believe it was the ice cream sandwich time frame, mm -hmm. was we tightened up the JNI referencing restrictions. Oh, we've done that several times. Because yeah. we, uh, you know, and, and this is usually to uh, to make things faster. Well, um, so, so some of the things that happened, you know, but when we had single threaded, you know, everywhere, mm -hmm. um, there were kind of two things we did at once. We went, we went multi-CPU, mm -hmm. and at the same time, we uh, also tightened up JNI. 
And I think they sort of went hand in hand. But for a long time, um, we weren't cleaning up JNI very effectively. So you could, you could pretty much guarantee that if you reference something from the JVM, that reference would always exist in JNI as long as it existed in the JVM. Well, basically what we were doing or is Dolby we, VM, let's the, be clear. the opaque hand, the quote unquote opaque handles that were getting passed back were just references to, to memory. To chunks and, of memory. Yeah, and then, addresses and that now, were changing. And then we switched to actually passing opaque handles. Right. That be, were actually yeah, handles. <laughs> yeah, because because at some point we realized we you know we're not going to make this GC any faster um, yeah. unless we start rearranging memory. Exactly. So. so so one of the one of the things everyone should do in, in addition to using check JI and I is is to also build against the latest versions of the NDK and build against the latest versions of the SDK. Be very, very careful, especially with native tools, um, especially if you're using any pre-built libraries, because that mm -hmm. you know you don't know how those pre-built libraries were compiled. Maybe they were compiled with an older version of the NDK. Maybe they're compiled with the build flag. Um, so in general, I you know especially with bu with binary libraries, be very, very cautious. Um, yeah, this is um, the reason we're talking about this is because recently it's it's become very obvious to us that as we do more address layout uh, address based layout randomization. Uh, <clears throat> and and just screw with the address space in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, old code that was compiled with very old NDK is not relocatable in the same way that the newer code is. And this also goes for uh, code that may have been compiled with a different tool chain. So mm -hmm. if you're using some other random tool chain to generate mm -hmm. Android code, be aware that we only test against the NDK. Yeah, so definitely, you know, all, all you guys out there, I know there's a, there's a bunch of other, um, you know, a lot of a lot for a long time, Chris Dax was like doing all sorts of cool stuff that we, you know, later introduced into the NDK. So you can definitely run into problems there. So just be very very cautious that you're always using the latest version <coughs> of our tools because um, that's going to guarantee the the longest forward compatibility that we can. Yep. All right. All right. So, anyways, cool game. I you know I don't really don't have much to say about it other than they really need to make this dialogue dispensable with the back key um, as a general. Doesn't that just bug the hell out of you? Right? <laughs> Back key must work. <laughs> That's next week's dude. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. Oh, dude, you should be you should be Frankenstein. You should yeah. be hipster Frankenstein. Hipster Frank with the beard. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I should keep the beard just so I can be I can have I can have I have sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> Your tablet is not cool as mine because yours is shiny and silver and mine is Blackish colored. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, that's it's purple. purple Actually, it is, that's yeah. uh, it's amethyst. It is amethyst. And this one isn't silver. Don't fool yourself. It's champagne. <laughs> it is actually. That is you the know color why? they call it. Yeah. Because we're the Sex in the City girls, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's why. That's why I've got this hat. Um, <laughs> it's all about accessorizing. <laughs> all right. So let's look, let's look at a game that actually, uh, unlike, unlike words, workout is somewhat enter is somewhat uh, actually. Uh, oh my God, that's small. You can bring up the tablet now, uh, Mr. Famster. Uh, and yeah, there we are. This is actually a portrait. I know. Look at that. That is his high production values right there. Now, Whoa. you'll notice um, this is one of those th times in which uh, actually looking at uh, screen size is useful uh, because uh, by default, this is, of course, an MDPI device. So you're getting very small text and very small icons. Yeah. Yep. Which game is this, guys? This is Math Maths Twister. Twister. Now, you, and you tell it's not from the US because it's got maths in it. And no one, no one in the US would actually call it maths. It would definitely be a uh, uh, something coming from somewhere else, you know, usually with some K in it or something like that. Maybe Australia. I'm not sure. I didn't look for this developers from, but clearly not from here. Did you know in Australia, yeah. they call soccer soccer? Well, as, as you know, originally that the, the term soccer came from the UK. Uh, and, that, that, and, we just, and we just kept using it, and they said, stop, we're calling it football. <laughs> I love this because yeah. it's, it's like we can make a 600-mile journey across England <laughs> in just a few sentences. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, it all depends on what I happen to be talking about at the, the, the time. Wait, hold on, hold on, wait. I've got, I've got one more. Uh, no, nah, I've got, no, nah, sorry. I, I Come on, give me, give me Liver Budlian. Come on. <laughs> be Paul Kinlan. <laughs> No, no, don't don't say that at all. <laughs> that's nothing like it. <laughs> that's dude, about as you, good. <laughs> that's that's the dude that tried to sound like Ringo in Yellow Submarine. That that is so absolutely true. Well, you know the funny thing about the Beatles too is they actually were coached to sound like that because they they came on. I don't know what's going on. This what are you talking about? I'm like no American's gonna understand you. You need to oh, slow really? way like, down. Oh uh, really? Like 
like what's his name in that one movie? Yes, exactly. So, so yeah. they said no. We're gonna, they were they, they taught them. So they actually said you've got to slow down the way you speak. They're like, all right, well, we'll speak like this then. And then you know, it sound like we're always on something. I think you mean Brad Pitt from Snatch. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. What you didn't know that because that's what I was talking about. Dan got it. <laughs> All right. That's enough. Enough about that. So let's get on to Math Twister. So uh, here, actually, I'll, I'll go with a bit more of a refined accent for this. Math Twister right. is is a highly educational game. We can choose untimed and different levels of difficulty, which will throw math problems at us. Like uh, you know, what is ten percent of eighty, or two times seven? Or six times nine, or ten percent of seventy, and they get kind of fun. I have Dude, no. you're now George Harrison's butler. That's right, something like that. Yeah. So by the way, I just want to I just want to pause for a second and recognize our new producer, producer Louis, who Louis is not <laughs> miked. No, he's and not. So he's, sorry, he's, he's, Louis. Our, he's oh, our, sorry. This he's is a Louis. silent it's, producer. It, so pro so producer Louis's name is Louis, but he spells it Louis, which really bugs me because my last name is Lewis and I spell it Lewis. He's not on camera today because his phenomenal uh, handsomeness he could be. Would, no, no, no. would cause all of us to look hideous in comparison. <laughs> right. Now, Lewis, the way you yeah. spell it, is the American fashion. That's Lewis, true. the way I spell it, is the French way and the original. Ah, I see. That's true. Oh, like, like could King Louis. Yes, all 15, 16, 20 of them, yes. Yeah. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Something like that. So and did they are, actually are, are pronounce you, are, it Lewis? Are you saying you're like French royalty Like some American dude? Yes. <laughs> not any more than you are Scottish. Uh, that's right, I'm not Scottish. <laughs> that's right. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, so this is a, anyways, it's kind of cool. It sort of combines a, a falling tower action with, with math. Um, you know, definitely in terms of talent, there's, there, there's a little bit of work to be done. Uh, you know, that's, uh, and I was actually a little surprised to see that this game um, was a uh, landscape game. It actually starts off in portrait and then goes to landscape. In general, if you're going to lock to one uh, dimension, you should kind of lock to one dimension. You know, whether if you're going to have a title screen that's in landscape, then your game should be in landscape. Oh yeah, you never want to make the user actually have to rotate, rotate their, their device. tablet. Yeah. Unless, so, well, unless you're just trying to get obese children to exercise, <laughs> which I understand. <laughs> yeah, you know, I wish somebody had done that for me when I was young. So um, uh, maybe that's why they call it Maths Twister. It hadn't occurred because you have to twist the tablet. Oh, that's you? a good yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. I had just assumed that it was the you know what Mormons do for uh, flirting. <laughs> you have know, to, you have to it's, explain it's that offline. Because, it's funny because I, I actually I was visiting some some friends. Mm. Some, uh, you know, they went to school at Brigham Young University uh -huh. with, and uh, yeah, they brought out this video. And darned if it wasn't the the sexiest game of Twister you've ever seen. Oh yeah, with, so that well yeah. that yeah, Twister is. I was that's beyond flirting there. <laughs> that's Twister. Twister's sort of into heady yeah. heavy petting already mm. when you get to like that. Exactly right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Yes, drunken, not drunken, mm. <laughs> completely sober party twister at BYU. All right. All right. There we are. All Let's the things, do it. things I never knew about. Um, all right, so that's math twister. Uh, you know, definitely, I think the, the biggest issues that I have are, are, are tablet optimization in terms of that. Um, I think, sure, the game is fine on a phone. We play it all on a tablet. Why? Because this has cool HDMI and, and it's running jelly bean. <laughs> um, thank you. All right, so one more game, which is also portrait. It is Jungle Jumper, and no, there's nothing sexual about this game, <laughs> just in case you're curious. There's no theme here. Wasn't so, initially thinking about that, <laughs> but now I can't unhear it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to all our viewers out there. Sorry so the thing too. I love about Jungle Jumper is this, like, Stuart Little title screen they've got. It's like, it's seriously... You're a rat. But you know what? It's not Stuart Little. I don't know. So this, this, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but Abel's Island. Oh, okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was like a Newbury Award winner. You can actually jump off the side. I had never done that before. <laughs> I didn't realize you could die jumping off. Yeah. I'm seriously, did, did, you, did you read Abel's Island? No, I didn't actually. I didn't. Oh, okay. I, right. I, I well, in that case, it. we can't share a moment. I like the fact that... Just, I, just believe me, the Abel's Island guy looked exactly like the Jungle Jumper guy. Okay. Well, I do like the fact that, um, that, that you actually get nicely and soundly eaten by these guys when you jump on them. Yeah, they've got some good animations. Uh, I mean, obviously, it wasn't made for a tablet in the sense that the, the background graphics are a little fuzzy at this resolution. Mm -hmm. That's always a little bit disappointing, especially when you can see that you know, they're, they're pretty much vector graphics, so you know, 
probably could have been yeah. rescaled at not too much expense. But yeah, I mean, this game is designed to be small. I would love to see it have a little more animation than it does. You know, yeah. it's like. It's well, and, and to tell the truth, I mean, this is sort of like Area Attack HD, where yeah. it's it's actually not as fun on a tablet because it's meant to. Uh, to have a smaller playing surface. I, 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 I mean, I do love AirTech HD on a tablet, though. I like it. Well, on a phone, though, it's so much easier. It is easier. Ah! I ran into his butt. There we are. Really? I was, he ate you? I was, no, he, I didn't eat He didn't eat me. I was just butt killed. So. That's disturbing. I know. Um, right. So, uh, let's see. What else is coming up? Well, next week, I think, uh, either next week or the week after, should see the uh, ceremonial unkegging of our... Android uh, fifth anniversary ale. Very exciting. I think we're exactly. Like, the it's, whole team has been looking forward to this. Um, it's a uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, he doesn't eat you at all. Yeah, sorry. Go on. Blended two malts and three hops. I can't remember off the top of my head what they are, but I hear um, it was the inaugural outing of our new brewery, and I understand it ended up a little hoppier. Oh, much people want it. Yeah, interesting. It's just all a right. little accident with the hops, but so, so we that's made, all right. We made more we than like IPA. Hops. That is a California thing, guys. That's it's a very fitting. Yeah, it hops. Is. Hops. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. It's because barley makes you fat. You know, that wasn't an accident. Uh, I actually did that by design uh, behind the scenes. Oh, really? Oh, you just, you, I so spiked it with uh, with extra hops. So Daniel Fam Famster yeah. ruined the fifth anniversary ale. In your words, ruined. Yes, he, Not right, my words. He, he made our fifth anniversary into a bitter drink to swallow. Do you do that with the, with our code too? Just like sneak in at night, and do some ninja check-ins. That's right. I, I can neither confirm nor nor, nor deny that. <laughs> gotcha. There we have Daniel Fam, ninja check-in master. I, know, I totally believe that. I do. I every now and then, you just find a rogue feature. And yeah, it's like, yeah. how did that get that ninjas? That's ninjas. what happens. It's yeah, totally ninjas. Yeah, Wi-Fi Direct. That was a total ninja feature. Yeah. Yeah. And it really was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Media codec dot encode. Oh yeah, total ninja, ninja. feature. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> so, um, so yes, continuing to get on the moderator, we actually do look at your suggestions, mm -hmm. and the best of these games we do present over to our buddies over at the Google Play team and say, please take a look at them. They may or may not feature them. Yeah. But, and um, not only that, but we actually uh, we are working on some collections of our very own. Yes, uh, yeah, we're very excited about that. I, we, this, we've seen that collections actually are, are fun. People like them. Um, I was really excited to see the retro gaming collection, which you know, we talk a lot yep. about retro game titles here, and we said we really wanted to see some well, really cool. We really wanted to do a collection because we're like, well, you can't put a retro game on the front page of Google yeah. Play because a lot of people aren't going to understand. Like, what the heck is this, yeah, man? It's going to blow their mind, you yeah. know? Right? We're not part of their system. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like 8 bit audio and low exactly. res graphics. But for but, people who want it, it's right. awesome. Like Collect me. it up. Yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm, I'm like, oh, yes, I'm seeing my childhood totally right here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Back when I didn't read Abel's Odyssey. <laughs> That's okay, because you had a childhood with 8 bit graphics. <laughs> <laughs> I used to dream of 8 bit graphics. Oh, yeah. And I remember when I was a child, I used to live in a shoebox. <laughs> <laughs> With a lid? Yeah. Oh, yours had a lid? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky man. <laughs> All right. We're punchy. Yeah, indeed. We talked about our games, <laughs> talked about some game development. We are going to uh, be shifting this uh, this show, right, time, time wise? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Um, we'll okay. <laughs> we might be. Watch. Big changes coming up. Big we will change. announce it on yeah. Google Plus. Yes. But uh, basically, we just have to get. Through this month, and then we have <laughs> got well, you know, we'll drink some more. So drink right. some more. Uh, we get through this month, and we are going to change things up. So keep an eye on us, and uh, keep the comments coming. Now, mm -hmm. let's see what people are saying on the comment stream. Uh, uh, God, we, we, you we actually guys suck we actually so have typical bad. typical I need more specific YouTube specific. comments. Really? Are there people um, being like... Okay, so here's a question about the Transformer Prime. Uh, is the Transformer the best Android tablet, or do you guys just use it? Uh, it's sitting well, around. the mm. Transformer Prime has some uh, some advantages. Uh, it, it is not definitely not a bad Android tablet. Um, I don't know if I'd go so far as to say it's the best. Um, for th As far as things that are shipping now that we can get our hands on and reliable, reliably get several backup units, mm -hmm. um, it is the very best at providing HDMI out. 
It's got really good HDMI out options. Yeah. Um, Asus added some things to the base Android system that allow it to do things like rotate into portrait mode. So that makes our show a lot easier. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the primary reason we're using it on, uh, on the show. Um, we have them, and they have this really cool feature. Um, you know, we don't have HDMI on our own tablets. Mm -hmm. Had to say, um, you know, the, on the Nexus Seven. So if we had a Nexus yeah. Seven, a Nexus tablet with HDMI out, we might use it. I mean, if you think about it, the Nexus Seven, in a lot of ways, is a stripped down Transformer Prime. In it's a lot like of it, ways, it's, yeah. You know, it's got the essentially the same processing power, but a smaller screen, uh, no rear camera. You know, just a, um, you know, mm -hmm. all the options are taken off. Yeah. So. Fortunately, we have a lot of experience with that chipset and that, that piece of hardware, mm -hmm. so it's a lot easier to show. Now, there are some disadvantages to the Transformer Prime. It's mm -hmm. uh, out of all of the, it's sort of the odd man out on rendering. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike almost all mobile chips, it's not a tiled renderer, it's a forward mm -hmm. renderer. Uh, and that means that it's very, very sensitive to performance uh, characteristics that, that the tiler can handle very easily, and, and vice versa. Yeah, so like, you know, for example, you know, there's 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 three different renderers essentially on Android. There we have tile based, um, deferred tile based, and we have immediate mode or direct render like on this. And this tablet is this this <coughs> chipset is really cool if you need to do some really clever effects that involve reading stuff back out of the buffer because the buffer is updated in the you know the in this case the, the screen buffer is updated in, in real time so it's actually really fast to go and read stuff out with a tile based renderer a deferred renderer it means that it has to reconstruct that piece of the buffer when you want it in the middle of rendering and that can slow you down an immense amount so there are certain kinds of full screen effects that this kind of chipset can do that are very difficult to do on a tile based renderer yeah it's you know, when you think about the way the hardware is put together, it, it's not so much that the tile-based render is bad at it. It's mm. that it's significantly better at not doing that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah that's that, yeah, so, so in other words, you're, you're not you're not actually doing something that yeah. that the hardware is bad at. It's just that it has mm. to forego a whole set of optimizations. Right, and and, and the problem is this. You know, this hardware is designed to work the other way. And so what this so, so the tile-based renderers tend to actually have performance problems when you start having to force them into sort of direct mode rendering because they just weren't right. designed to work that way. Now, on the other hand, tile-based renders excel at some things. You know, for instance, if you're doing readbacks from the frame buffer for blending, um, they can be very, very fast. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, many tile-based renders, especially the ones that are fully deferred and have geometry sorting, are incredible at dealing with completely unsorted geometry. Which yeah. is a real benefit because mm -hmm. sorting geometry is a not actually a tractable problem. You can, mm -hmm. you can get close, but it's sort of a traveling salesman thing in Absolutely. some. Absolutely. Uh, but also, it takes up a lot of CPU resources. Yeah. So now that being said, a lot of the drivers for tile-based renderers also do some of that sorting mm -hmm. and binning on the CPU driver. So there is there is additional CPU load already in a tile-based renderer just kind of to begin with. Well, I mean, then, it's, it's always a, a and cooperation then, between yeah. the CPU and the GPU. And then the magic yeah. sauce really is, and you know, the, the, big, the big trade secret is how much is done where, as you know, it's kind right. of, and, and exactly, you know. That's how, very true. It's like the, the you know, but, but, but basically, um, but yes, so um, in theory also, in, in, in the theory is that, and this isn't really proven, but that the, the immediate mode guys would say when you get into really, really huge amounts of geometry, when you start doing things um, like uh, having um, procedural geometry, basically, mm -hmm. that you start running into things that d immediate mode renderers do better than tile-based renderers. And yeah. I think the jury is still out. We'll have to wait to see what happens with... Uh, with well, nobody's going to do that, right? Well, <laughs> not, open, not a, not a, I, th I think I'd be really surprised. Open, OpenGL 3 is starting to add these kinds of features in. So I think, you know, I think we'll mm -hmm. have to look, you know, five years down the line, we're going to definitely have APIs and chips that will support you know, mm -hmm. doing that kind of geometry. Well, but, but the thing is, it's not, it's not so much that um, uh, the yeah. sheer amount of geometry. It's fact, I mean, the same reason that, that sorting is a different yeah. problem. You know, you're right. You know, right. on a Tyler, you're, you're really dealing with just a, a very large number of frustra, basically. Yes. So you've, you've already pre-clipped a lot of your triangles. So uh, the chances of getting interpenetration mm -hmm. is very low. Now, at the point where we are sitting yeah. uh, as application developers, mm -hmm. when we say sort your geometry, we're not actually thinking about sorting our trials. We're usually thinking about sorting it on the object level, right? Mm -hmm. Because we'll, we'll draw entire VBOs at a time. Exactly. So and that's, that's I, actually, that's, that's a difficult problem because you get these interpenetrating things. Absolutely. And that's, and that's actually a big challenge. It's a challenge anyways because you, you also have certain geometry that is uh, uh, translucent. Mm -hmm. And so you actually have to maintain that in 
proper um, you know, front to back order. Um, right. While you actually want to maintain all of your geometry that isn't translucent in back to front order, and so you have to and you have to watch out for all those interdependencies as well. So it, it's it not like this, you know. I mean, this isn't a secret to anybody because no. um, desktop cards have been doing this for a long, long time. It's really mm -hmm. only in the mobile space that tilers are super popular. Absolutely. Um, but a lot of it's because, as you're saying, you know, with deferred renderers, or I'm sorry, with with immediate mode render renderers, you get. Uh, more predictable performance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easier to reason about what the GPU is doing. Yeah. It's easier to do multi-pass effects, but uh, and and it's easier to take advantage of these you know super long shaders that you've got too. Yeah. Um, but it does mean that you know, it, when when you're in a much more resource constrained environment. Yeah, it, it, it's they don't shine. They don't shine exactly, and so and I, I think that um, so it is interesting. So we got one of the thing, one of the things that's nice about this is one to see that, that most of the games run really well on it. I mm -hmm. mean, honestly, you know, the vast majority of games on Android do great on the Transformer Prime, um, and it's really exciting. Also for us, the other thing that's nice about Transformer Prime is they did get Jelly Bean, and yeah. uh, it's really really nice. Like the difference in smoothness. When, when this guy going to Jelly Bean was huge, because it felt fast to begin with. But yeah, I never we, had a real problem with it. But yeah, but when, when you, you see Jelly Bean, it's on the same it, it's way. Like, uh, like my Galaxy Nexus, when I upgraded to Jelly Bean, I'm like, wow, I, I feel like I just got a new phone. Yeah. yeah, and it's because that you know we did a lot of work, which we're actually really hoping to bring to you mm -hmm. over the next few months to talk about how you can de-jank your applications the same way we de-jank the operating system. Uh, mostly because all the guys that did the de-janking mm -hmm. sit like two cubes away from us. And they're and like, when are you going to do this online? They actually dude? hate us. And they're like, God, would you go away? But yeah. we have we listening bug devices. We them all the time, yeah. Yeah. And when we say we bug them, mm -hmm. we mean actually microphones in their mm -hmm. office. So We're going to get all their secrets. Yeah. The, the important thing is, is we added this tool called SysTrace. Yep. And SysTrace is really, really awesome. So for, I'll, I'll show you an example. So on one GPU, we could actually look at SysTrace and say, all right, the GPU was rendering here, and then the thread went to sleep for this period mm -hmm. of time, and then the GPU was rendering here. Why did the thread go to sleep? Well, the thread went to sleep because at that point we did a readback from the GPU. Mm -hmm. And we could say, and that was the, that entire chunk of time, which we could actually measure. And you can see that in SysTrace was actually mm -hmm. the GPU going, hey, exactly. well, I'm going to do a bunch of calculation now. This sucks. So Well, um, now, remember, of course, that, that there's two, two components to any readback, right? There's the, there's the fact that you're, you, know, you have to stall out the the GPU writing yeah. side. But you also have to uh, make sure that the resource isn't um, in use on either side. Right? Yes. So, it's, yeah. so it's not just, um, uh, sorry, you, so you need to collect the tiles yes. and do all of, you know, collapse your deferred render. Yes. And you also need to do a synchronization between the CPU and GPU. And that's what really kills you. Uh, and one, one thing that we've noticed with video is that uh, no matter how Fast you That's are. That's why or how cache good coherent you... CPUs and GPUs are kind of kick ass. Um... <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, no, because uh, because here's the problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not actually um, it's not actually a synchronization problem. It's yeah. it's uh, more a sequencing problem. I know. I was I yeah, was kidding. Right. Uh, but that that is yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. Um, but anyway, the the problem is, or or the solution, I should say, mm. is that you just never want to have the GPU and CPU. Holding onto the same resource at once, and and yeah. so and you know if you're working on a desktop part, you you already know how this works because you have to deal with PCI synchronization, mm -hmm. and the solution is staging buffers. So you don't do a readback into a texture and then immediately use it. You yeah, do a readback exactly. this frame while you're reading the readback that you did three frames ago. Yeah, and it's actually, it's actually one of the things people do actually for reflection is that you actually mm -hmm. don't calculate a reflection every frame. Right. But you use you know, every other frame, you know, maybe every two frames, you know, depending on how much you're allowed. You say, all right, well, now let's calculate a reflection. Now we'll apply that. And that's from two frames ago, but that's OK. Mm -hmm. Because actually, the user can't really tell because it's on top of some other wavy, meshy thing. And, right, right. And, um, um, yeah, and a lot of it depends, of course, on, on who's doing the readback. I mean, because yeah. the, the problem is that the the GPU is considered to be a user of that texture from the point that a draw call involving it is submitted mm -hmm. to the point where it retires. Yeah. So that's actually a huge length of time that the GPU is not, in fact, using the texture. Absolutely. Um, and in fact, most of these GPUs are uh, are executing completely serially. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for instance, it's. It's no problem for the GPU to read back a texture as long as it's not actually writing to it right now. Yeah. But having the CPU read it back, or if you need to do any kind of processing that involves the CPU, which, as you noted before, yeah. 
you don't really know because a lot of this the magic happens it's in driver. the driver. I mean, yeah, each absolutely. each one of these chips is not just a self-contained magical graphics not producing at all. unit. No. It's uh, it's part of an ecosystem of software that lives in multiple places. And yeah, so it's interesting. And sometimes you actually, for some of these effects, you actually can do them entirely on the CPU. You know, like that. And some mm -hmm. of the guys, some of the guys, you just fake it out. You're like, all right, I know I've got approximately this geometry. Let's calculate it on the CPU. Let's not even get the GPU involved. Well, sometimes we'll that that's your best choice, right? Because yeah. um, especially if you've if you've got things where uh, you've got a lot of um, uh, recursion in your oh, algorithm, yeah, recursion, yeah, uh, or <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, 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 so, feedback, right? <laughs> feedback. Yeah, so, so let's say you're doing an IIR filter, mm -hmm. um, which, which depends on feeding back the results of previous calculations. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's incredibly difficult for a GPU mm -hmm. to do well, because mm -hmm. um, uh, unless you're doing, doing entire frame buffers yeah. at a time, right? So, but CPU is fairly well, good. You know, and, and that's one of the things that's great on these, on these newer devices. We have some very, very powerful G, uh, CPUs with you know, vector processing built mm -hmm. into them. You know, Neons can do a lot of really cool stuff. Um, so it, it definitely is an opportunity to actually go and balance some of the load between the CPU and GPU. And, and, and especially when you get into these tilers, you can, really, you can start to guess at what they're going to do badly, and you'll usually be right. Uh, All right, I think, uh, yeah. and then that's it. World any? world record for longest answer to completely yeah, banal question. I know. I Next question. About, yeah, is there anything else on the stream that's uh, interesting at all? Yeah. So um, I have a question from Bug Sides. He's asking uh, if the OEMs keep pushing hardware speed, won't programming become really easy? No more optimization is needed. Well, the, I, I, I guess at some point, way, way in the distant future, mm -hmm. the thing is, we keep pushing. Um, kind of two things. One is the is the expectations for quality. So you know, well, you know, we're we're pushing more geometry, we're pushing more textures, we're pushing more layering, um, and so we're keeping up with the hardware. The second thing is we're going higher resolution. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. and as at every time we go higher resolution, it's kind of funny. We sort of take a, a step forward and a step back, and so, a step forward and a step back. Yeah, exactly. Well, and so I have my own personal answer for you, and and of course the answer is yes. See JavaScript, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, that's why we have the web, is because this incredibly inefficient mode of programming mm -hmm. that, that grew out of a markup language and, and an experiment in computer science yeah. has now become capable of running almost anything as long as you're on a massively multi-core computer with gigabytes of RAM. Exactly. Um, but on mo and and so I, I think that that trend will probably continue, especially yeah. now that we've really gotten for multi-core into the desktops. But here's the problem for a certain class of games. I think I think well, that you won't have to optimize. Here's the problem for mobile, though. A little mm -hmm. thing I like to call the laws of physics. There's a certain amount of weight you're willing to carry in your pocket. It cannot change the laws of physics. That's right. Thank you. I was waiting for that. I know you were. The uh, <laughs> wait. Does that make you evil, Scotty? Uh, does it? Does. You're right. All right, never mind. I don't know nice. what accent I was doing there. <laughs> anyway, the point is, you, so you have a specific amount of battery. Yeah. Uh, you have a specific size and a specific tolerant for heat. Now, if you've ever uh, felt the back of, let's say, a giant you know, Mac Pro or a, one of these big Windows workstations or anything like that, you know that the type of computational power that it takes to run, let's say, It totally WebGL. heats my house. It's awesome. Yeah. Like, I don't need to need to turn on the heater at certain times. I just turn up the Yeah, all I do is check my Gmail. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> exactly. That's why I call it V8, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, and none of that's to take away from the miracle that is modern computing, but to get that into the size. I mean, it's the it's same way that you can. It's a lot less heat than that Cray XMP well, was doing. Was right, <laughs> and, and it, it's the same way that that you can be like, well, gee, you know, um, transatlantic ocean liners can produce huge amounts of horsepower. So, I guess we don't have to worry about designing cars to be aerodynamic. <laughs> well, no, because you're never going to get that, you know, that engine yeah. into that size and make it work. Efficiently, right? I, I think I think on mobile it's always good. To, it's always good when you can design something efficiently. You can always help the user's battery life. You know, we, you know, sometimes the reason why people stop playing mobile games is like, oh, this game is sucking away all of my battery. And you know, yeah. so you being more efficient is always better. Um, you know, that being said, you know, we are getting to a point in which certain kinds of optimizations aren't as important. 
Yes. And, and for a lot of games. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of, there's a whole series of games that just doesn't have to care about certain things. Yeah. Um, but memory is always an important resource. Uh, we have a lot of devices that have, you know, different sizes of VMs, different sizes of, of actual physical memory, different amounts of stuff that's running on top of them. So it's always good to be resource sensitive on, mm -hmm. you know, on these resource constraints. But there devices. are trade offs, you know. I mean, yeah. sometimes you can you can trade memory for a greater CPU. Absolutely. That's less the case than it than it used to well, be. The CPU has really gotten fast, and memory buses absolutely. haven't quite kept well, up. Well, I mean, we you know we could we could make cars more efficient today. We could build them out of titanium. Mm. But the problem is they'd be really, really, really expensive, and no one would buy them. So you know, except you, for you, I think you, don't you have a titanium car now? <laughs> no, I don't. But that sounds like a brilliant You're idea. Right, I'm mixing you up with Sergey. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I know. Uh, if people do that. It's the beard. Um, I bet anything Andy <laughs> has a titanium car. <laughs> So, uh, in any case, you know, so, so I mean, there's a point in which obviously you're, you're, what I'm saying is that in terms of efficiency, there's a point in which you want to, so you, you have to stop and say, look, it's just not worth it. We've hit the 90, 95 percentile of what, you know, what we're going to mm -hmm. get. Um, but I, I think that, uh, that, you know, especially in mobile, it's, it's, it's uh, forced us to relook yeah. at efficiency and say, you know, this is really important stuff, which is fun because we love it because we're computer scientists. Oh, and, yeah. And we, we love actually looking at those kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. Remember, though, that actually speed is not as important as it once was, but smoothness is. So a lot of times we're doing things that don't actually increase the speed of the application. Mm. What they do is increase the responsiveness mm. and make certain that the animations can play at 60 frames per second. So making something twice as fast isn't hard. Making it consistently 60 FPS when you start it out at 15 FPS or 30 FPS is often extremely difficult, because, mm -hmm. especially if you're trying to make it Consistent, consistent. Yeah, and and if you're trying to, you know, you, you know, one of the one of the real challenges on Android is you're trying to use a very small amount of memory targeting a very high resolution screen, and uh, and you are fighting the fact that you've got, you also have garbage collection going on that's every once in a while that's going to take 20, 30 milliseconds. I love how a very small amount of memory. <laughs> yeah, I know. And is. Yeah, like 64 megabytes of memory, you know, is, is well, which is, you know. Right, or, you know, I mean, if we have a gig or two gigs in, in, in a yeah. device, I mean, that's yeah. like, I used to dream of that. I, well, exactly. I mean, I actually, I actually remember that 16 megabytes of memory for a machine, for a computer was just something beyond, like, that was what professional photo workstations had, and that was like $5,000 oh, yeah. worth of memory. So exactly. the fact that we have that for a process. So, you know, it's always good to take things, in, things into consideration, but that's what I mean when I talk about quality. You know, the quality keeps going up. We keep finding ways of using this computing resource. So I think that we're not going to be at a time anytime soon. Maybe 20, 30 years out, we're going to be saying, yeah, you know, we don't need to worry about this. Um, but I, I think that for we still have a pretty long cycle before that stuff becomes uh, unimportant. Yep. All right. I think, I think is there anything Any, else Anything exciting? else on the stream that's just really uh, knocking you out? No? No. All right. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, as always, uh, vote stuff up in the moderator page. Uh, let us know what you're playing. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Um, we're going to try to you know, mix up the format of the show a little. We've got some exciting stuff coming on uh, as soon as we get some sleep. Uh, so uh, thank you once again for joining us and our friends over at uh, Lagunitas, uh, which is actually Daniel Pham, for providing this uh, delicious IPA that we're drinking now. All right. God All right. bless us, everyone. Little Android, play us out. God bless us, everyone. There we are.